What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, scratch made, meaty, amazing, homemade Baconator. That's right folks, we're making our own buns, grinding our own meat, and making our own bacon and I gotta say, it's going to be delicious. This is some meat. Pat it dry. And what I got here is a USDA prime chuck roast and a piece of sirloin, which looks an awful lot like picanha. Please don't yell at me. I got it because it's got a beautiful fat cap on there and should make for some wonderful burgers. So just like always, we're gonna cube this up so it freezes nice and quickly because we want it to be really cold when we grind it for a nice clean grind. And of course you can separate the meat and the fat and get that perfect 80-20 or 70-30 ratio you're looking for, but kind of like with sausage making, as long as you use a nice fatty cut, you should end up in the ballpark. Big piece of silver skin on this guy, take that off, but really not doing much else. And per usual, you can use pretty much whatever cuts you like for burgers. Oftentimes, the cheaper the better, just because we're sending it through a meat grinder, so texture is really not all that important, but anything like chuck or brisket will work out great for you. I'm gonna pop this into the freezer for the next 30 minutes or so to get nice and cold. Ooh. Nice cold meat going through the grinder. Going through the small die today, just a single pass. Beautiful grind, nice and pebbly, just the way we like it. Don't want any of that fat to smear and warm up in there. Then it'll over emulsify our meat, leading to a tough burger. Beautiful. And before we go ahead and portion out our individual burgers, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some bread and some eggs in there. I'm just kidding, we're not doing that. We're not making meatloaf, folks, but I'm gonna give this a little bit of a mixing just to make sure all that fat is evenly distributed. And I wanna work the meat just a little bit so it's a little more tacky, that way it doesn't fall apart when we're cooking them, but it's still gonna be much less work than any pre-ground beef you're gonna get at the grocery store. And the Baconator has two patties on it, each weighing a quarter pound, so we're gonna weigh out a bunch of quarter pound burgers. Beautiful. And repeat. And now we've got Meatball Mountain. And now with the assistance of some patty wax, we're gonna go ahead and form these all into some nice little burgers. Beautiful. And there we go, big old pile of quarter pound burgers. And I know what you're thinking. Hey dude, Wendy's uses square patties. Why did you just make them round? And uh, I tried to find a square press, but couldn't. And I really like the way these are nice and uniform and flat. So now I'm just simply gonna go through and uh, make them square. Just like that. Obviously you don't have to do this, but I know everyone would yell at me if I didn't make these square and I call it a Baconator. So do as many of these as you feel like, or you could just leave them around. But I'm gonna get these all squared up, pop them in the fridge and time to move on. This video is brought to you by Zbiotics. Ooh. Zbiotics is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic designed by PhD scientists to help tackle those rough mornings after a night of drinking. And basically what happens when you drink alcohol is a toxic byproduct is created in your gut called acetaldehyde. But Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break down that toxin in a very similar way to how your liver works, but in your gut where you need it most. And it's that byproduct, not just dehydration, that is the cause for feeling rough the next morning after a night out. And how it works could not be much more simple. You grab one of these adorable little bottles, give it a shake, open it up. Make sure this is your first drink of the night. Mmm, got good flavor too. And then proceed to have a night out enjoying yourself. Make sure you drink plenty of water and get a full night's sleep and you'll wake up the next day feeling refreshed and ready to face the day. And I gotta say, I love this stuff. I've been using it for a while now, especially with football season in full swing. I love having some brewskis, watching the game on Sunday. But with Zbiotics, I can wake up Monday morning feeling refreshed and ready to get right back to work. Clinkies. Ooh. That's good. With football in full swing, the cold season approaching, Halloween is right around the corner. I highly recommend picking up some Zbiotics to pair with your candy, especially because I think Halloween falls on a Tuesday this year, and I highly recommend it. So if you want to give Zbiotics a try for yourself, go to zbiotics.com using the link in the description box of this video or scan the QR code on screen right now to go to zbiotics.com where you can use code CHUDSBBQ to get 15% off your first order. Again, link in the description, taking you to zbiotics.com where you can use code CHUDSBBQ at checkout to save 15% off your first order. Thank you, Zbiotics. Next up, let's get our buns going. Starting with going into our stand mixer with some warm milk, our active dry yeast, and our sugar. And at this stage, you can totally let this rest for a minute to make sure your yeast is alive, but I just bought it, so I'm gonna keep moving on by going in with our eggs. Well, most of our eggs, anyway. Give that a little mixy poo. And go in with our bread flour, kosher salt, dough conditioner, just picked this up on Amazon. It's called dough conditioner. Helps make the bread nice and soft. Some milk powder and let that come together until it's a nice shaggy dough ball. 
And once everything is mostly mixed, we'll go ahead and add in our softened butter. Boop. Now we're gonna mix this on medium speed for about eight minutes. And once a beautiful dough ball is formed and it's pulling away from the bowl nice and clean, into a grease bowl we go. Cover this up with plastic and let that rise for the next hour to hour and one half. Now that our dough has doubled in size, out it comes. Boop. Hit that with a little flour if it's acting kind of sticky. Punch all that air out of there. Beautiful. And now we're gonna go ahead and portion this into 90 gram little dough balls. 99. Close. Perfect. And once all portioned out, go ahead and tuck all the seams to the underside. And then give it the old table roll to make sure it's nice and tight and nice and round. Beautiful. Onto a Silpat line bagging sheet these go. I'm gonna tend some greased plastic wrap over the top and let these proof for another 30 minutes or so. Now obviously we can't talk about the Baconator without talking about bacon. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I'm gonna make my own. And luckily, I got that started last week. This is a pork belly. Pat it dry. Wow, two pat it dries. And when it comes to making bacon, I really like to go for a nice center cut piece of belly because as you can see, this end has got some extra muscles on there, kind of scraggly. And if you look at the end cut, that doesn't really look like bacon. But right in the middle here is where all the good stuff is. So I'm just gonna zip the ends off of this, starting right around. Save that for sausage or making burn ends or something. And we'll take this end off as well. Beautiful, what we're left with is some lovely looking streaky bacon. Well, pork belly anyway. But now we need to turn this into bacon, so we gotta get some cure on this thing. And to do that, I'm gonna do the same thing I've done in previous bacon making videos, where I'm gonna take the weight of this pork belly and I'm gonna get 3% bacon cure. And this is the very same bacon cure I made in my first bacon making video. You can check that video out if you'd like. Just type in chud bacon, I'm sure it'll be the first one. But in that episode, I made this bacon cure, which is the proper ratios of salt, pink curing salt, sugar, and some other flavors and spices, like thyme and rosemary, a little bit of garlic. So for this slab of pork belly, 3% of the weight of this would be about 58 grams, which is what I've got here. And now we need to get it all over this pork belly. And this is an equilibrium brine, so every piece of this pork belly needs to be covered with this exact amount of cure. And you can try this for yourself. You can always start at maybe a 2% cure ratio. See if that's salty enough for you. I like a salty bacon, something that's a little more akin to what you're gonna get at the grocery store, but you can do whatever you want. All sides, folks, no rookie moves here. Don't forget the extra. And there we go. I'm gonna pop this into a vac sealer real quick. And there we go, fully covered in cure. Nice vac seal on there. And now we just have to let this rest, let that cure and salt do its work for the next five to seven days. Periodically, I'll come through and give it a flip to make sure everything is penetrating evenly. And then we'll check back in. Seven days later, this bacon is looking nice and red and fully cured, feeling nice and firm. So I'm gonna go ahead and bust this out of the package and give it a quick rinse under some cold water to make sure there's no extra salt, sugar, or cure on this pork belly. And just like that, we've got a beautiful cured piece of pork belly looking nice and clean. Now we need to go ahead and fire up the pit and turn this cured pork belly into bacon. Nice and toasty. Even this late at night, I still gotta worry about those pesky little boot snakes. And on the pit we go. We're doing a nice cold smoke today. This is a fully cured piece of meat, so no need to worry about botulism or anything like that. But down we go. Boop. Shape it up all nice, nice, nice and plump. And I took some coals out of the chud box that I just cooked some dinner on, followed by one dense log to get a really good cold smoke going. We want some really nice dense smoke on this thing without exceeding 150 degrees. And we're gonna cook it until it hits about 150 degrees, but at least a good few hours of smoke then we may bump up the temps to make sure this thing is fully cooked through and looking beautiful you could cover this pork belly with whatever you want you know you could put some pepper on there pastrami rub whatever your favorite rub is but today we're going for some classic bacon for these bacon burgers so we'll check back in in a few hours one overnight chill later, this is what our bacon is looking like. And to recap, I cured this for seven days, smoked it low and slow, sub 250, cooked it low and slow, sub 150 degrees, get it nice and smoky. And then the last hour or so of the cook took about four hours. I bumped the temp up to around 250 just until this hit an internal temperature of 150 degrees. And now it's time to slice it up. <sighs> Now, unfortunately, all these meat slices you get for the home are a little bit too short, so I'm not gonna be able to slice this bacon in its entirety, so I have to lob some off, which is kind of a bummer, but is what it is. Two fighter jets. Great. 
That was incredibly loud. But as you can see, beautiful looking bacon. Gotta love bacon in slab form too. This would be great for making some lardones or chunks or burn ends or whatever we like. And now we slice away. Look at that strip of bacon. That's a super thin one. So I'll probably thicken that up a little bit. But that's the beauty of making your own bacon is make it as thick or as thin as you like. Do a number three. That is some perfect looking bacon. Love it. Now we repeat. I'm telling you folks, if you haven't made your own bacon yet, you're missing out. And just like that, all sliced up. We've got some thin stuff over here, a little more thick cut over here, and then this big chunk, which we will uh, probably use in a future episode for something. And if this tastes half as good as it looks already, whew, we're in for a treat. Now that our buns are looking nicely puffed, I'm gonna go ahead and hit them with a bit of an egg wash, simply just some egg and some water. That's just gonna help with the browning, make them nice and shiny. And at this point, you could go on with whatever toppings you like. At Wendy's, I don't believe they use any sesame seeds, but you could put some flaky salt or some everything bagel spice or whatever you like. Although personally, I do like some sesame seeds. So we'll do some of them with sesame and some without. Untoasted, please. And now we're gonna bake these off in a 375 degree oven for probably 20 minutes, 30 minutes until they're looking nice and golden and registering an internal temperature of around 200 degrees. And while those bake off, I got this pellet cooker fired up to about 275 degrees. And we're gonna just get some of our bacon cooking because I love using my pellet grill for cooking bacon. That ought to be enough. Buns are baking, bacon is cooking, patties are ready. I'm not gonna make my own American cheese or my own ketchup today, but I am gonna make my own mayonnaise. Starting with one egg, boop, a shot of some Dijon. I'm gonna go Dijon heavy, because there's not much on this burger. Also gonna go in with a splash of some lemon juice. And I don't think there's any onions on the Wendy's Baconator, but I'm gonna throw some in there anyway. These are just some rehydrated onions. I think they'll make for a really nice sauce. And just get that blending up. And now I've got some oil. This is some avocado oil, but any oil will work. I'm gonna stream this in a little bit at a time. And just like that, in a matter of seconds, we've got a beautiful, thick mayonnaise. The more oil you add, the thicker this will get, so you can make it exactly how you like it. Be sure to give this a taste, and probably gonna hit this with a pinch of salt, but our mayonnaise is done. And just like that, out of the oven, our buns come, looking beautiful, love that golden brown, feeling so light and fluffy. I took these out of the oven, hit them with some nice butter on top, put them on this wire rack, and let them cool for a bit. And right on time, our bacon is off the pellet grill, looking absolutely beautiful, I must say. Went for some nice crispy bacon today, and this stuff is looking just perfect. Oh, the flavor on that. Cannot beat homemade bacon, folks. Mm, that is phenomenal. But I think it's time to make a burger. Beautiful squishy bun. Love it. Brush that down with a little bit of melted butter, just for good measure. And onto this nice toasty chud press we go. Ooh. And now that our chud press is ripping hot, we're gonna take our two square patties and go right on down. And give them a press. Take off the paper. Definitely not my best square patty work in the world, but I don't really care. Season those up with a little salt. And once a nice crust has formed, whoo, beautiful. Those look really good. Go ahead and cheese them up and we will start the baconing. Oh, perfect fit. Three slices of bacon on that guy and another three on top. Ooh, Baconator, here we come. Ooh. There we go. I don't know what I was expecting, folks, but that looks ridiculous. Now we're gonna take some of our beautiful mayonnaise, thickened up really nicely. Go down with a spoonful of that. Hit that with a little ketchup as well. And then take our beautiful Baconator and go right on top. Good Lord. Put some sauce on the top side as well. And there we go. The Chuddy Baconator has finally been made. It only took like a week and a half to make. That is a behemoth. And there it is in all its glory, folks. Bunch of homemade bacon on a fresh, bun, two freshly ground patties, a little homemade mayo, some ketchup. This thing is just calling my name right now. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous about this one. I usually make some pretty unhealthy things on this channel, but uh, that might be the new winner. That's a lot of bacon, a lot of cheese, but you know, I gotta do it for science. Oh my God, mm -hmm. that is so juicy, so meaty. Mm. That is truly a ridiculous burger. I, I, I gotta take another bite.
Mm, good God, that is genuinely delicious. Right off the bat, it is not nearly as greasy or just horrible as I thought it was gonna be. You know, it's a lot of meat, a lot of cheese, a lot of bacon, but it eats completely differently than a Wendy's Baconator. I've had that once or twice in my day and let's just say it puts me down. This guy is actually going down pretty easily, you know? That bacon is nice and crispy, adds a nice amount of crunch to it, which is something I thought we'd be missing because there's no veg on there, no crunchy tomato or lettuce or anything like that. And also just the general lack of preservatives that are in this compared to a fast food burger. Burger. You know, it's freshly made buns, freshly made mayonnaise. I know exactly what went into the burgers, exactly what went into the bacon. And I'm not saying this is healthy, but uh, it's probably healthier. Mm, that was so good. Mm -hmm. Perfectly seasoned. I made a lot of mayos in my day, but that onini mayonnaise is probably my new move for making burgers. That is phenomenal. And I know I made my own bacon before, but this batch came out particularly good. Mm. I think really it's just been a long time since I made a burger on the old chud press, but it is the perfect smash burger. And the addition of some crispy bacon, <laughs> don't mind if I do. That is so good. The way that bun just squishes down too. Mm, mm, mm. It's a meaty boy, but I'm gonna just keep going. Nose here. Mm. This burger is kind of blowing my mind right now. You know, I was fully ready to say that it's too heavy. It needs some pickles, needs some lettuce, needs some mustard, something along those lines. But kind of like the Oklahoma onion burger, this is just working really well for me right now. And I'd like to say that I'm going to make this all the time, but uh, I don't want to die. So I probably won't be making this too soon, but we'll see. That crispy bacon is just perfect. But before I eat the rest of this in shame off camera, I think it's time for the official taste test. Look at that meaty bite. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make an absolutely fantastic scratch-made Baconator. I highly recommend giving this one a try. I know it's a lot of work for a pretty simple cheeseburger, but it really is a great experience making your own buns, making your own bacon, and this burger really does come out so much better than the fast food counterpart. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button, let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.